All right. All right. Welcome to the SEO plus AI show. My name is Josh Bashinsky. If you've never seen the SEO plus AI show before, we are the finer show online for SEO information and AI information and the intersection of SEO plus AI. Uh, SEO and uh, AI are very closely related together. And if you're not following kind of both, you're definitely going to miss out. As always, I have with me my co-host, Greg, who's at Starbucks. Say hi there, Greg. Hey, guys. How are you, Josh? <laughs> I'm doing well. So is your Starbucks good? Is it tasty? It is. Oh, it looks like you got some ice there. That looks good. Looks nice. All right. Fantastic. Well, Greg's going to mute himself, and he's going to try him in occasionally so you don't have to hear the Starbucks music. But uh, let me just change the speaker to this. All right, great. So now, now it's all me. Ha, ha, ha. My giant ego. So... Uh, we have a, so today we're going to be talking about some really cool things. Uh, I'm going to be showing you some uh, ways of using Google Trends to find out new niches you might want to go for, the affiliate niches, or for your business uh, at areas that you might want to do some some pre-pre-keyword research. Then we're going to take those keywords, we're going to move them into Keyword Spy. I'm going to show you how to do keyword research in Keyword Spy. Or uh, I'm going to at least talk about in general why you want to do keyword research, how you would do keyword research, and why it's so important. So this, that's the main SEO tactic I'm going to be delivering for you guys today, why doing keyword research is so very important. And I'm not talking about finding the keywords that go on your page. We'll get to that today if we have time. Uh, and if we don't, we'll do it next week. But really, this is the keyword discovery phase. This is trying to find the easiest niches, the low-hanging fruit, the uh, topical cluster pages you might want to go for, the money pages you might want to go for, the the middle of the road, partly topical cluster supporting pages, partly money pages you might want to go for. So that's a super, super important step of SEO that not a lot of people talk about. So I want to talk about that today. Uh, if you're watching live, why aren't you? you? You should probably be watching this live so you can get the information uh, right up to, right, right up to uh, uh, at, at, at the moment. Uh, you, could be, you could be Johnny on the spot with the information. Uh, also, let me know uh, if you're watching live, you can ask questions uh, in the chat. You should see a chat on the right-hand side on YouTube. Uh, assuming I'm streaming this and not recording it. Yeah, I'm streaming this and not recording it. Great. <laughs> so uh, as, as long-time viewers of the show know, uh, uh, you watch this show for SEO and AI excellence. You do not watch the show for excellence in YouTube broadcasting. Sadly, Greg and I are not going to be watching, uh, not going to be winning. We're not watching any YouTube tutorials on how to do this properly. And we're not going to be winning any YouTube broadcasting. I don't know. What do they have? Do they have, what's the Oscars for YouTube? Are they the Webbies? I had never heard of anything, but yeah, we're definitely low on the list. Well, we're going to be very low on the list for excellence in YouTube broadcasting, but that's okay. Because you come here for the SEO knowledge and the AI knowledge and to stay up to date with what's going there uh, and all the newest, best stuff that's going on there. I remember one time, uh, there, is a real, there is a thing called the Webbies and it includes YouTube, but it includes podcasts, it includes any kind of web content. And uh, uh, one time we were invited to it. We were in Vegas one time. So my wife and I went and she wore this really low cut dress. She'd hate me telling this story, so but she never watches any of my stuff, so it doesn't matter. She wore this really low cut dress and she, she has you know nice big boobs. And so her boobs were just like, pow like popping out there and so our friends were going on the front page of youtube and they were broadcasting the webbies on the front page of youtube and we got this seat right up front this is before the webbies were big are they big now i don't know if they're big now and anyway so so my wife's in this nice cocktail dress uh and uh which i quite enjoyed and uh and apparently the 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 cameraman for the webbies enjoyed it too because she was on the front page of, her boobs were on the front page of youtube for like half an hour and she's getting she's getting texts like bing why are your boobs on the front page of youtube her mom's like what's going on what are you doing like all of her family was texting her and stuff it was it was pretty funny anyway so that's see that's the kind of stuff you get on this show humorous anecdotes seo wisdom that no one else will tell you ai wisdom that no one else will tell you greg's occasional comment when he lounging at, at Starbucks, you know, that kind of a thing. So uh, let us know in the chat if you have any SEO questions at all. If there is an SEO keyword you want us to work on, or there's a niche you're thinking of going into, or there's a, a, an EMQ, an exact match query, or even just a general idea you want to examine in terms of uh, ranking for it online, put it in the chat and I will do those keywords instead. So you get free SEO on the show. Put your keywords in the chat if you're listening live. Uh, and that's why you'd want to listen live. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell and do all the other little crap that's down here somewhere. I don't know what the F it's supposed to be. Uh, do all that. Uh, put your keywords or your niche idea, just a seed idea, put it in the chat and I will actually use that keyword if you want or I'll try to pick one from Google Trends when we do that kind of preliminary uh, investigation. 
Okay. So now let me just share the screen and check to see if anyone is actually watching this and asking any questions at all so far. Oh, crap. It's great. Okay. So I'll meet myself here. Fantastic. So Doron says, hey, Josh and Greg. Hey, Doron. How you doing? Uh, Pass it OCV1 says, yes, I am live. Awesome. Great. Uh, Doran says, at least Greg isn't muted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes yes excellent excellent so and then uh the Furman uk says here for the knowledge all right excellent all right guys so you put your questions in the chat there if you want us to get to your seo questions uh, as i said while the show is running you get any free seo advice that i can give you plus if there's a particular niche or keyword you want us to work on make sure to put it in the chat and we will get to it as soon as possible Okay, so as per usual, let's start off with our customary what's new in AI uh, segment. We'll go through this super quick, uh, but it's super important to go through this and watch what's going on with AI because AI is going to change everything. Not only uh, is it going to change, uh, AI is going to change everything. Not only is it going to change uh, uh, the world, it's going to change SEO. So we need to watch what happens in AI. Whatever happens in AI is invariably going to happen to SEO uh, coming up. And you can see here, uh, for, the, for the past seven days, there was a spike uh, a couple days ago, uh, but uh, it still remains strong and people talking about it and thinking about it and looking at it. So what has been going on? Well, uh, one of the big news, uh, news pieces, if you haven't heard, is Llama 2. Llama is uh, Meta or Facebook, aka Facebook's large language model. It is their main competitor with ChatGPT. And a big, huge bombshell news just happened this week. I'm sure Greg, you saw it too, is that uh, Facebook released their large language model open source. Free to use for commercial. I don't believe there's any attribution required. I'm not a lawyer, can't give legal advice. You should read the license yourself. But it is a very open source license. And uh, they're giving it away on Microsoft's Azure system and Amazon's AWS system. And you can also access it through Hugging Face as well. So that is a huge game changer in terms of what's going on in AI. Uh, uh, they say it is comparable with GPT-3 and GPT-4. They say it's comparable with ChatGPT. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens there, if people use it, how well they use it. Again, you can get it and you can access it on uh, uh, AWS, on Azure, uh, and on Hugging Face as well. So check it out. See if it's as good as ChatGPT. See if you want to use it for your for your research purposes, uh, for some of your CRO purposes, some of your CTA purposes, some of your sales purposes, some of your branding purposes. That's what these large language models are good for. Do not be using them for keywords. Do not be using them for keyword discovery because they're two years old. They don't, they don't know what the new trends are. Do not use them for SEO knowledge. They cannot tell you how to do SEO. Uh, don't use them to ask them what, what crypto to buy. Don't use them to ask what stocks to buy. That's definitely going to hurt you. Don't do those things. Do you know anyone else out there telling you these things? No, I'm the only guy. Uh, because I have a pathological need to be forthright, <laughs> which which Greg will attest to. So, uh, yeah, so definitely uh, uh, super huge news. Uh, and we're going to show you how to use AI properly with SEO in, in just a couple minutes. All right, new new stuff. Character.ai also was down this, this uh, week. Character.ai uses Llama and, and Anthropics Cloud. Uh, Cloud 2, I believe, and ChatGPT to make uh, characters and kind of like you can you can chat with them as friends and you could chat with them as kind of a dating thing. So that's where that's going. We've seen that happen a lot. I'm, I'm sure longtime viewers of the show have seen the the, the companion bots. That's, that's a very common way that these chat bots go is into the companion mode. Generally speaking, some kind of companion, friend, even romantic partner, lover, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Uh, and so people are talking about the maintenance there and when would it be done? Also, there's two here, which we saw last week as well. More people coming out with an AI to plan your house decorating, plan your house decor, plan your house decorating, plan, uh, plan any design you're making to your rooms, plan any home renovations. So that's another place where more visual AI is, is going to be used. Super interesting. I also noticed another article, Greg, I don't know if you noticed this. Apparently, the U.S. government is going to be passing regulations now, I don't know if this is actually going to come through. This has not been finalized yet. But the scuttlebutt is that the U.S. government is going to be passing regulations that any AI that generates an image has to have a watermark in it. Now, that's going to be fascinating, Greg. Uh, uh, what do you think of that? Have you heard of this? I actually have not heard of that, uh, but it makes sense. And, yeah, we'll protect, uh, I guess, 
you know, makers and should be a good thing for, I think there'll be more AI regulation coming down the pipeline. Um, but that's a good start. I think we need it for sure. Yeah. So, you know, I have mixed feelings about it personally. Like on the one hand, I like using mid journey and getting no watermark out of it. I can use it however I want. <coughs> excuse me. And, uh, and excuse me. Oh, geez. I completely lost my voice there. But on the other hand, um, I could see how a watermark would save people from deep fakes. Like if you make a deep fake of somebody doing something and there's a watermark in it, well, if you're, you know, like actually when I think about it, it's actually like, I agree with Greg, we do need more regulation, but it has to be smart regulation. This regulation is quite stupid when you think about it, actually. Uh, now that now that I've taken a moment to think about it, because think about it. Anybody who wants to make a deep fake that's malicious to hurt somebody else is going to use underground stable diffusion software that's not going to obey the watermark law and it'll just put it out there anonymously so you can't trace it. That's the only thing that that watermark will be useful to save. Otherwise, it's completely useless. It's not going to help the artists that got ripped off that these mid-journey and stable diffusion models are borrowing their art. It's not going to save them in any way or it's not going to give them any money in any way. So this is another example of government making weak regulation that just does absolutely nothing but looks like it does something. So it's politics 101. Yeah. So it, I mean, that makes more sense the way you explain it. It's not going to help anybody. You know, why are they doing it? Are they just trying to, you know, put their uh, flag in the sand, so to speak, and say, hey, you know, we're here. We're going to start taking a look at this. Uh, you know, be careful, watch out. And but. Yeah, the, the, the evildoers, the, the bad actors, they are going to do uh, whatever they need to do, and they'll, they'll get by all of these regulations. So um, it really just hurts the, the law-abiding people. Yeah. Um, and so, I don't know. Um, yeah, it really is just, uh, it really is, it's kind of sad, actually. So, so, so this is a really interesting piece of news. If that's the way that AI regulation is going to go, uh, it's going to be exactly what I've been saying the entire time. Fake regulation from fake governments, you know, just faking it, making any regulation. Because AI is the new money-making model for the entire human species. If you are not watching AI, you are in trouble, right? You need to watch it or just watch the show and I will summarize it all for you. So so that's really important. Share with all your friends. Tell them to come watch the show. I, 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 scant toward, I slant towards SEO, obviously. It's an SEO show, but I'm also going to go over AI in general because whatever happens in AI is going to happen to SEO because SEO is nothing but an adjunct of AI at, at this point. So that's interesting that we saw that. Uh, why is character AI down? Uh, there's an AI voice changer. Okay, so now is where we get to some new ones. Uh, is, is character AI down? Like People really like character.ai. Look at all the searches here of people thinking this is important. Now, unit host AI came out. What is unit host AI? Well, I checked out what unit host AI is. And uh, long story short, uh, people really, really boomed. And no one was searching for it. And then boom, a lot of people were searching for it. And it is just another not safe for work, uh, Japanimation style, boyfriend, girlfriend chatbot. That's all it is. And we've seen so many of these come out, Greg. So many of these have come out. Uh, so many, so many. There's, there's, and look how popular it was. Like it just exploded. Uh, and that's kind of gone right back down, but. I think that's probably a, uh, I think that's probably a a a, uh, um, a user satisfaction problem. I think they realize that these things are stupid and shallow and have no depth. But when I build my self-aware AI and if I decide to go this route, uh, there will be depth, right? Uh, Cassandra can actually love you. Uh, I, I've actually using my psychology background in academia, masters and PhD uh, that I was working on. Uh, uh, I'm I'm, re I'm remaking the psychological structure of the human mind, so she can actually uh, uh, have feelings like empathy and and love and things like that. So anything, just something to keep in mind. Uh, so that was uh, unit host AI, and then there was also let's just to quickly round out this section. Meet AI is another kind of meeting app. AI headshot, headshot generator is exactly what you think. Uh, this loop CV AI was this one. Now, this is a great one. Everyone pay attention to this. This could really help you out, okay? This is a good gem of a gold mine. I haven't seen this one yet. This is a new one. It got really popular a few days ago. <clears throat> and check out what it is. 
It is the first job search automation platform. Loop CV collects new job. It basically, it's basically Auto GPT for your CV for for applying to jobs. Loops because because Auto GPT doesn't work all that well and Agent GPT doesn't work all that well as a general worker. So they made a specific one just to go out there. It's an AI that goes out there and applies for jobs for you. That could really help some people out, right? Having a having an AI like if you're working on SEO. Apply to every single SEO job out there. Have Loop CV working for you and apply to every single SEO job out there. And then negotiate. Then negotiate. And if they're, you know, it, it, it's, so I had a friend, another friend named Greg, <clears throat> who was my teacher at a technical college I took for microcomputer systems repair back in the 90s. That's how I got started in IT, way back in the early 90s. Uh, and he told me a piece of wisdom that I've never forgotten, which is super, super important, and it's this one. If you want to make more money in life, if you want to be successful in life, apply to every single job that has anything to do with what you can do. Even if you already have a job that you're perfectly satisfied with. And I said, why the F would you want to do that, Greg? That sounds like that's super, uh, that's super stressful. You're like you're going for job interviews every week. Like, what are you talking about? And he said, as long as you can hide it from your current job, apply to every single job that has, uh, 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 that, that does what it is you want to do. I said, why? He says, because you can't take a job if you didn't apply to it. And it's networking. Networking is all about not who you know, but who knows you and knows that you're good at what you do. That is the art of networking. Who knows you and knows what you're good at doing. This is how you go to the interview. This is how you get comfortable with interviews. This is how you network with people, the right people who have the money and a need to pay you to do a job. And when you're there, you can say, you know, look at, I'm pretty happy with my current, uh, my current uh, situation, but you know, I'm open to offers, uh, maybe a consulting role or maybe a contractor role would work better. Uh, you know, it's up to you guys. And then you could take on those jobs, right? So for SEO, fire up loop CV, Get your CV going for SEO or for AI, if you're watching this show for AI, and apply for like prompt engineering, for example, and apply to every single job that has anything to do with those things. It's all about networking. It's all about numbers. It's all about top of funnel. And this is doing automatic top of funnel for you. Heck, we should fire up Loop CV and tell them, don't hire an SEO. Uh, uh, get keyword get keyword spy. <laughs> That's what we should do, quite frankly, because it's all about top of funnel. And it costs no money. You just fire up Loop CV and it does it for you right? I haven't used it. I don't know how good it is. I just saw it. It's new. But these are the ideas that pop into my head immediately about, like, see, AI is the place to be. You would have never gotten this gold nugget of information if you didn't watch the show. He said, shamelessly bragging about his brilliance and the brilliance of his show. So that was a super cool one I've seen. We haven't seen this one yet, Greg. Uh, 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 an auto GPT just for looping, uh, applying to jobs. Yeah, this one's this one seems good. Uh, it's definitely uh, you get a little free taste to it, uh, but there's going to be um, some cost to it. So definitely want people to know that it's, you know, free to a point, but uh, definitely try it out. Um, it looks looks very promising and makes total sense. If AI can do the, you know, the, the grunt work for you and then you close the deal, um, that's the name of the game. I mean, sales uh, platforms have been doing this. There's so many sales CRM platforms that, you know, line up uh, leads and prospects, and then the human comes in and closes the deal. It's just sort of the same thing, just doing it for job interviews. So very cool. Good find. Yeah. So this is why I watch the AI space like a hawk, because just every week, you know, it's like gambling, but it, but it's the good kind of gambling where where it's going to pay off very quickly, right? Uh, uh, every week, something new is going to come out that's going to be uh, that's going to change the AI game and ch could change your game forever, could change your life forever. So information is power, knowledge is power, as Francis Bacon said in the 15th century, and this is the important knowledge you want to know. So try it out, guys. Try out Loop CV. Get it going for your SEO. Get it going for whatever it is. It doesn't matter if you're already happy with your current job. Just test it out to see how these loop uh, AIs work and then put an SEO in it and then uh, 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 get it going and then go to the interviews and say, you know, you know, just get used to interviews. Networking, ABN, always be networking. 
You can't do the ABCs of sales, always be closing, if you don't first do the ABN, always be networking and make sure they know who you are and what you're good at. That's the art of networking there. They need to know who you are and what you're good at in, well, you, when you shake their hand. Hey, I'm Josh Bashinsky. I'm an expert marketer, work in AI, I do SEO. Boom, they know who you are, what you do, and then you wouldn't believe how many more jobs are gonna come to you in, in, that, in that way, in that shape or form. So here's an AI that will do it for you automatically. I highly recommend you guys check this out and watch the space for other ones like this. The other one that was interesting that came up uh, let me just see here if we got uh, questions. It looks like we got a whole bunch. Oh, gee. Okay, so uh, uh, Alexis says, niche idea, full figure swimwear, summer swim 2023, plus size swimsuit or swimwear. Great, Alexis. Sure, I can do that one. It's for your site, Resort Swim Goddess. Okay, sure thing. Not a problem, Alexis. I see a lot of the students from uh, SU University here. That's great. Ryan Sheehan says, I think it was Barry Schwartz who mentioned that people are not really using Bing chat. I've looked at my various sites over 50 and haven't seen any drop in organic traffic from Bing. Thoughts? Yeah, so I stopped using Bing chat myself. I find it super annoying. It gives you the surface level information, doesn't really answer your questions anymore, and not really useful anymore, and just pushes you to the web page as quickly as possible. So um, that really is quite fascinating. I'm not really sure what to make of that. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Barry was correct there, right? So that sounds right to me. Uh, he says he's looked at his various sites over 50 and hasn't seen any drop in organic traffic from Bing. Yeah, exactly. I don't think that uh, I don't think that Bing is implementing this chatbot idea very well. This 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 search copilot idea. They haven't mastered it. Basically, it's just a, a shallow chatbot that just summarizes things up. And they barely answer any questions for you because they're terrified and they want to get sued. But quite frankly, if Microsoft knew how to do search properly, they would have been a real competitor for Google since the beginning, and they're not. So that's kind of an important thing to keep in mind. Um, uh, uh, we got another keyword idea here. Doran says, interesting, Anthropic Cloud, Cloud 2 isn't mentioned. Yeah, Cloud 2 was kind of big the week before, Doran. Uh, Doran says, yes, watermark is now a policy, but it's self-regulation. Ah, okay. Well, that's interesting to know. Uh, well, that, that, then that makes that, that, that rule, that policy even more useless if it's self-regulation. <laughs> I mean, like why bother doing it? I don't know. Not John says, would need to be some sort of watermark that is invisible to the human eye. Yes, but identifiable, identifiable by machines. Otherwise, you could just crop in or use AI to paint it out. Exactly, you could use AI to paint it out easily. You're right, not John. They've definitely, uh, OpenAI has talked about that for over, almost over a year now. For six to 12 months, they've been talking about AI signals in the text and AI signals in the images that is invisible to the human eye, but but is, is uh, viewable by AI. So they've definitely been talking about that. Doron says, watermark and bias and limitations are getting behind paywalls. Our new policies, however, are self-regulated by open uh, AI, Meta, Bing, and Google. Yeah, well, if they decide to do it, fine. Um, they also just need to step up their security, quite frankly. When AI steps up their attack capability, they need to step up the AI defense capability. And so forcing a watermark is a stopgap measure at best, he said in the infinite chamber of question answering. Look at this, look at this infinite chamber we got going on here on the screen. I love it, it's fantastic. That makes my autism happy. Look at that. Ooh. Um, Doran says, or a squirrel model for Greg's calendar. Uh, a squirrel model. Uh, oh, he says, oh, Doran says, I'm officially applying for Keyword Spy. Okay, great. Awesome, Doran. Uh, uh, sign up for Keyword Spy. You can try Keyword Spy free for two weeks with no credit card needed. Uh, Alexis says, thank you. No problem, Alexis. We'll get to that in a second. Not John says, LOL, Google doesn't even know how to search properly anymore. This is true. The SERPs are a mess. They, they are, they have been really messy lately, haven't they? Like the, some of the search quality definitely has gone down, but you know what I think that is, not John? I really think that's because we've gotten so used to chatting with Bing Chat and ChatGPT and, and it handholding us and it being useful that we're, we're forgetting our keyword ease. We're kind of forgetting how to search in Google and we're like, we don't want to do it two hours of research on the best, uh, 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 we just bought, uh, uh, patio furniture. I don't want to do two hours of research on the best patio furniture. I just want ChatGPT to tell me what it is, you know, or give me a quick thing, right? Maybe that's a bad example. Uh, but, you know, so Google really 
uh, really has been dropping the ball lately, but I think that's because our, this, our searcher trends have changed as well. So that's interesting. As our searcher trends change, they need to change their AI. Uh, it all needs to, and he said in the echo chamber of, of question answering, uh, uh, this, is the, this is the segment called the echo chamber of question answering. Uh, as the search, uh, as the search um, um, techniques and the search uh, keyword ease changes, so too, and the ex expectations of the searcher changes, so too does Google's uh, search engine and AIs need to change. Not John says, finally, the interesting part will be if image compression messes with the cryptographic signature. Yeah, yeah. And it, it won't be hard to get rid of the cryptographic signature. You can compress it. You can, re, you, can, you can upgrade it in an AI. You can downgrade it in an AI. Doran says, here's a high-level question. The new algo update last week, what's the chatter? Uh, uh, there's an emoji in the way. I can't see GTLL testing for tolerance on AI content. <clears throat> um. Yeah, uh, so that's a great question, Doran. Um, we've, uh, we've been thinking about that. Uh, uh, I personally think the chatter last, uh, for, for this last update, personally, uh, uh, it broke, it, it was so drastic, and it was so, uh, uh, I don't know if anyone see, saw this in the wild, but it was so drastic and so... Uh, 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 it was obviously a search product. It was so drastic, it broke a lot of the, the search the, the uh, search results uh, checkers. Uh, and, and usually when that happens, when you see the search results checkers uh, 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 get broken, he said in the, the echo chamber, the, the infinite echo chamber of question answering, when you see that answer, when you, when you see that happen, uh, the, the, when the search products completely break, it's usually because they put out a whole new search product. They remove the featured snippet, they add the featured snippet, they add in ads, they remove ads, they add in a new search product, uh, uh, some kind of knowledge graph uh, snippet or removed it, or they were testing out generative search in a, in a wider scale. So that's what my guess was that was going on there, although I didn't, uh, I didn't see it, I didn't watch it, so I didn't see what was going on there. Okay, guys, so let's get right to the meat of what we're talking about today. Uh, so today, uh, uh, we're going to talk about the first part of how to rank. We're going to talk about uh, uh, using... How do you do, how do you stay on top of new trends? How do you find the most easy keywords to rank for? How do you find the niches you should go for in the first place? So what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna show you how I would do it. Now, uh, Alexis was kind enough to give us a keyword to, to work on here. So uh, full figure swimwear. So I'm gonna use full figure swimwear was the first one I saw. Uh, let me just go here, blah, 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 copy it, boom, okay. So full figure sim swimmer, here we go. Uh, there was another one, I'm gonna get past that, that was not, not that interesting. So, okay, so here's a number of things you can do on Google Trends. Let's say you're, however, you're not even sure what you wanna rank for at all, you wanna find, you wanna get, uh, uh, you wanna explore new tro topics, go to Explore in Google Trends, select the country you want, and you can start looking at the search queries here that's going on. And you could also check the, the top of what people search here. Uh, for the past 12 months, you can do it. You could also do it for the past uh, uh, 90 days if you want to do that as well. Uh, and you could start seeing possibly some trends you might want to stay on top of in here. You may or you may not. You're going to have to dig a bit. You can also look at top. You might see some trends in here that you want to uh, uh, be talking about either for your blog uh, article ideas, uh, uh, keyword ideas, like talk about the Reddit out outage, talk about uh, some of the stuff that's going on here. Home Depot was big for some reason. Costco, Craigslist, stuff like that. Okay, and if you're like, okay, Josh, how do I find, though, um, affiliate products and things like that that I might want to, uh, 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 or, or kind of what, what people are, what are, what, what are people reviewing? What are people making money on? What, what, what kind of things would I show up for there? Here's some tips. Type in the word best. And then go off of the, the best queries here that you see here for the past 90 days, either worldwide if you want, or in the United States. And these will start giving you better ideas for potential blog posts you can do or potential niches you, you could get into. So best prime day deals 2023 was up a lot because I bet you, I bet you it was prime day very uh, in the last uh, three months. Uh, and there's a bunch of Diablo 4 stuff. Uh, Diablo 4 came out. I'm playing it. It's not bad, actually. Um, and you might be able to find in here, best weed killer. There you go. There's a best portable air conditioner. 
here we start getting to some uh, queries which are doing well. And these are actually products you could actually make some money on. Actually having a review page for air conditioners would not be a bad affiliate play, would it, Greg? Because air conditioners have a high ticket price, but you don't need to go to a store to 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 buy them and, sh and 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 get them yourself. In fact, have them shipped to your house. It might be better. Shopping for air conditioners online could really work. Yeah, you don't need to like go and, and get a a sense of what it looks like or how it feels or you know, you just see it in a picture and it's gets good reviews. It works well. It doesn't consume a lot of electricity. You you buy it. Boom. So, yeah, that, that's perfect for affiliate. Yeah. So this this would make you a lot of money, and look how look how popular it is. So let's drill down now. now Alexis, I'll do yours because you submitted it. But let's just drill down. So notice how this took me five seconds to find an affiliate niche I could possibly go into. So I, let's say I already have five or ten affiliate sites doing well, or 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 are in, are in flux. I want to find a new niche to get into. Here it is. Boom. Here's a, here's a potential candidate. So let's go into portable uh, best portable air conditioner. Uh, at the, you know. Go with climate change. Everything is going up with air conditioning, right? Everything's getting hotter. Uh, and if you want to check to see in the last uh, five years, how's this been going? Uh, you can see it's going to go up. It's going to keep going up. It's been going up every single year, except for last year was cold. This year, it's going to keep going up. This is going to keep going up over time, guys. So get into it now. This is a niche that will keep making money and would probably be good to rank for. So I'm going to grab this one, too. And that's what you do. Basically, you just tip, tip the word best in there or top and you just go through them, the related queries, the rising ones to see what's what's writing. Best weed killer is another good one. Best robot vacuum, another one. Best mattress. Again, mattresses. I've been talking about how good the mattress niche is for what? Six years now? Six years. If you had gotten on my suggestion for the mattress niche six years ago, you'd be making money hand over fist. And, and it's amazing, like this is something you'd think people would want to lie down and, and test the mattress out. But I bet you if I look at five years here, yeah, look at this, boom. In 2022, for some reason, uh, oh, because it's 2023, <laughs> that's why. Uh, let's go just for best mattress, period, boom. Best mattress has been strong, it's been strong. So you, it's, gonna, it's gonna keep making you money, right? So best mattress, another great one there too. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go down now to Keyword Spy. Now, before I get to that, the question is, so I found some great keywords. Let me start a notepad here. So I've got uh, full figure swimwear that I promised I would do. I've also got best portable air conditioner. So Josh, let me ask a quick question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, would you take the word best or would you just do a search for portable air conditioner and remove vest you could do either one uh uh i think that uh, uh keyword spy would probably be work better if you just did the the root the portable air conditioner it should be able to handle best as well but if you just do portable air conditioner that probably would be better and then we just have to make sure that the word best uh, uh shows up in there somewhere which it will because what uh because here, here's the point um um st taking taking two steps back uh, now what you want to do is now that you've found some areas that you want to rank in. And so it doesn't matter where you get this information from. Uh, your client, your client gives you the information. They say, okay, we want to rank for this, this, and this. Uh, uh, your boss gives you the information in house SEO. We might want to rank for this, this, and this. We might, you might sit, tell the SEO, find me new niches that we should rank for, or find me new areas we should move our business into. That happens for an in-house SEO on a fairly regular basis. Or you might be the CEO of a business that you need to find the new niches. And so you would use this Google Trends method I just showed you. Uh, uh, it's a really free and easy method. And you see, I found good niches kind of immediately. And obviously, if you were more health oriented, you'd put in part a stem, you'd put in an engram or a stem of the search. Uh, that you think you might be into. You know you're in health, put in health. You know you're into uh, supplements, put in supplements. You know you're into mattresses, put in mattresses. And see what's related to that to find out what blog posts you could be making, what ideas you could be ranking for. This is how you generate ideas that you're not even sure what you want to rank for yet. And you might have a general idea of where to skew it or you didn't know at all and you just went to Google Trends, started looking to see what, what's, what's popular these days and started drilling down on the niches. Like health is popular, what in health is popular? Type in health and you see what's popular in health, et cetera, et cetera. That's how you would do that. 
So now that you kind of have a general idea, STEM, a general idea, a direction of what keywords you want to rank for, like we do here, uh, we have these two ideas. We have full figure swimwear that we want to get to, and we have portable air conditioner that we want to get to. <clears throat> the question is, you want to you want to get to the root, right? You want to pick the root idea, if at all possible. Now, what's the what's the benefits regarding the root idea? You get a broader search. You might find better keywords or opportunities you did not know about. So that's interesting. You might. I will uh, broader search. There we go. And again, you don't come here for excellence in typing either. Uh, but if you go, you go uh, then more specific. So, so the examples would be uh, just swimwear. So the examples for that, those ideas we got would be just swimwear and air conditioner or portable air conditioner is a, a totally different type of air conditioner. It'd be up to you. You could do air conditioner or you could do portable air conditioner as well. If you go more specific, then you will drill down to areas you are more interested in. Uh, uh, the risks here, it might be too general. But I guarantee you'll find something interesting. So you'll drill down more to the areas you're more interested in. Uh, uh, but the risks, risks being too specific. You might might miss great niches you did not know about, okay? So that's really important as well, uh, uh, the risks. The risk being too general, uh, it might not be, you know, if you're like, I don't do all swimwear, swimwear, Josh. I only do full figure swimwear. Okay, well, fine. Then you don't want to do that. If you're like, I don't do all air conditioners, Josh. I just want to do portable air conditioner. I would ask, okay, what? how did you get to this decision to begin with? Are you sure you only want to do full figure swimwear? What if there's just a better business for swimwear? What if there's another niche in swimwear you don't know about that's better? You'll never know unless you don't go that, that high up in the chain, right? If you don't go that high up in the chain, you'll never know it. So I would recommend maybe thinking about a broader search. But if you're like, Josh, our business only does full figure swimwear, we would never get off full figure swimwear, then I'd say, oh, okay, well then definitely you want to go more specific is what you want to do. Or if you're like, Josh, we only make portable air conditioners. We would never make in the window air conditioners. We don't do HVAC systems. We only do portable. I'd say, okay, fine, fine. Then, then stick with portable, right? There's valid business reasons my, why you might want to specify it. Otherwise, I would say go as general as possible is what I would say. Go as general as possible. And then the other idea is the hybrid method. You might be like, what's the hybrid method? Hybrid. It doesn't cost that many. If you have a really good tool for searching niche niches, do both. Why not do both? Run separate reports. If you don't mind, uh, you know, depending on what piece of software you're using to do this analysis for you, you could do both. You could run the general and you can also run the specific and make sure you have uh, uh, what it is you, you want to get. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna run swimwear and air condition. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna run swimwear because uh, uh, I'm just gonna run swimwear. I'm gonna run full figure swimwear also because that's what I was asked to do. And I'm gonna run portable air conditioner because that's kind of the, 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 the more upper, upper level hybrid that should include the, the, the keyword best. And if it doesn't include the keyword best, I can always run another report and start with best portable air conditioner and make sure it gets that as well. Uh, so that's what I could do. Now, so you could do this. This is what you would do in general. It doesn't matter what piece of software you use to do the niche research, but you would need, this is a perfect opportunity for AI. Perfect up for AI Copilot, right? This is where you want to be using an AI Copilot because an AI Copilot can go through all these niches for you and find what is easiest and what is got the most traffic and what has the most money behind it and what is hot, but what is also easiest to rank for. Uh, you should not use Ahrefs, right? Ahrefs does not have an AI co-pilot to help you with this. And it bases all the difficulty on links. 
And that's only one factor out of like 200 factors. So you can't use SEMrush, you can't use hrefs. They're really quite useless. You're free to use them if you want, if you want to waste your money and increase the risk to your business. But my job here is to help you. And I'm telling you, hrefs is a waste of money. It's a risk to your business. It costs way too much. SEMrush is a waste of your money. It costs way too much. I wouldn't use it. I would use our tool, Keyword Spy, to do this. We have built an AI co-pilot into Keyword Spy, which is a one of a kind. There is no other uh, software out there like this that in keyword discovery will uh, 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 start with a base or seed keyword, and then it will use our advanced AI to find the easiest niches. Looking at metrics and using my 25 years of experience as an SEO consultant, uh, looking at metrics that nobody even has even thought of looking at, right? To give you a much more accurate SWOT analysis. And what is, what is a SWOT analysis? A SWOT analysis is what you should do for every business venture. It measures strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It's a risk reward analysis, right? It's the, it's the standard, it's the gold standard business risk reward analysis. And you're running a business at the end of the day. I do business consulting at the end of the day, which is marketing consulting, which is SEO consulting, which is AI consulting. That's the levels of which what we're doing here, right? So you need to do a SWOT analysis for all your business endeavors or a risk reward analysis, a risk, uh, uh, a risk pros and cons analysis. And this AI will do all the hard lifting for you. You don't have to manually check the niches anymore and you don't have to rely on outdated crap software that people just use because they don't know what else works and what else is out there like our system. So let me get these guys going here. So I'll just do a quick tutorial on keyword discovery, how it works. So here it is. First off, step one, you fill in the difficulty modifiers to the left. Step two, you enter in your EMQ or the general keyword you want to rank for. Step three, this, this, this tool will find the most lucrative uh, keywords that you are in this niche that you want to rank for. It will extend it out and the AI will extend it out. Uh, this is all based on my free uh, video I put out uh, about a year ago that had, I don't know, 50 or 60,000 views or something like that. This is doing that uh, free method that would take you hours per keyword. This is doing that uh, automatically for you in minutes. Then you click go, and then you would sort by the final ROI to find the easiest keywords that also make you the most money. So these are some very important difficulty modulating questions. These are difficulty modulators. For example, if you are a top level expert in this niche, you would select, yes, I'm a top level expert in this niche. And you would only select this if Google knows you are, right? Every, a lot of clients I work for, they're like, you know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the authority in Jaguar parts. No one knows more about this than me. I've been in this business for 20 years. Okay, great. I believe you. But does Google know this? Is this represented online anywhere? If the answer to that is yes, Google knows about this, then go ahead and click this because it's going to be easier for you to rank because Google knows you're a top level expert. That could be you, an author. That could be your brand. That could be any of those things. And that'll be fine. Then we click yes to this. Or... Do you plan on using AI content? Uh, uh, Google does have a bit of a hate on for AI content if you're not following the numbers correctly. Uh, the only tool I know of that has accurate numbers seeded over hundreds and hundreds of keywords that tell you exactly where you need to be uh, uh, measuring, uh, as Doran mentioned earlier, the GLTR uh, uh, measurements for content is Keyword Spot. I don't know of any other tool that has checked to see what the stats say, where you need to be in terms of the predictability numbers for your AI content uh, 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 in order to rank and not be slightly demoted or fully demoted by Google. As my students in S underground SEO University know, uh, uh, which if you're interested in joining, email me at joshpachinski at gmail.com. As my students in underground SEO University know, it's, uh, SEO is about two things. It's the yin yang. The top part is rank brain. You need to please rank brain so it boosts you. And the second part is spam brain. You need to not piss off spam brain so it demotes and de-indexes you. That is the yin yang, if you will, of SEO in a nutshell. And quite frankly, using AI content, probably full, full disclosure, is, is perfectly safe as long as you're within the variances of the numbers. If you go outside the variances of the numbers, that's when you start having some danger. And so we, we recognize this in the difficulty tool. And if you plan on using AI content, you would select this and it would be a little bit more difficult for you to rank. Uh, as a general risk mitigation strategy, you would be wise to presume, 
It doesn't make it necessarily true, but it'd be wise for you to presume if you're going to use AI content, the content might be a little bit more spammy because I don't know if you're going to use Keyword Spy to do this. Keyword Spy has the AI Copilot built in, which is going to make the absolute most helpful content for your user. And if that is the case, you can just leave this alone. You'll be fine. But if you plan on using AI content outside of Keyword Spy, then that means it probably will be a little bit more surface level. It probably be, will be a, bit, a little bit less helpful unless again, you're using Keyword Spy. Keyword Spy, you can leave this alone, but if you wanna just be really uber careful in your risk uh, mitigation assessment, you should really select this uh, that you're gonna use AI content. And then finally, the last, uh, 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 the last uh, selection here is, do you already have a high domain authority? Are you already using a powerful site? Is this, is this campaign of new keywords gonna be built on pages that are already on a powerful site? If so, things are gonna be easier for you. And so you would select this as well to make the, the, the final calculation easier. So we can give you an accurate, an actually accurate, we can tell you where in the SERP you will show up. That's how accurate it is. We can tell you where in the SERP you will show up with a margin of error of you know plus or minus 10 spots or so. We will tell you where in the SERP you will show up partially because the AI uses actually good consulting information like this. And you, t you ask me, what other SEO tool that does keyword niche planning for you actually ask these questions. I'm not aware of any of them, quite frankly. So that's where we go. Okay, so let's start this off. The first one I have here is a portable air conditioner. We're gonna run that. We're gonna run it on all, con all locations globally. Actually, you know what? We're gonna do that in the United States because quite frankly, you probably couldn't ship those things overseas. You might have trouble shipping those things overseas. So we'll just presume in this, this business, it would be United States. And I'm gonna say get results. So that is started down here already, portable air conditioner. Now I'm gonna do the next one. And that was gonna be, uh, now I'm gonna ask you, Alexis, uh, uh, are you already a top level expert in this niche? Do you plan on using AI content? And are you already using a powerful site? Uh, uh, I, I don't think your site's powerful enough to say that you're using a powerful site. Does Google know you're a top level expert in this niche? If I search for swimwear authors, do you show up on page one? If that is the case, I would click this for yes. And do you plan on using AI content? Uh, let me know in the chat so I can tailor this for you. While you're putting that in here, I'll answer these questions. Uh, 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 Doran says, uh, no matter how much you think you know, you always learn something new from these sessions. Appreciate your time, Greg and Josh. No problem, Doran, it's our pleasure. Bruce says, on, on what not John said, do you think people use ChatGPT similar tech for top level informational searches, but resort to traditional SERPs for more transa transactional searches? Uh, yeah, quite frankly, I think it's possible. I think it's possible that uh, generative search at the top of the sales funnel, like up here in the informational space where they're just asking general queries, I think generative search is going to take some of that away, quite frankly. Not as much as other people think. I don't think it's dead entirely but I could see it reducing up to 50%. So if you can survive on 50% of your traffic for informational queries, like what is, what are portable air conditioners? Like that kind of query, or what are full figure swimwear? What is full figure swimwear? Like, like, like literally like an eight year old is searching this who literally has no idea what this is. And that happens all the time. I watch how I'm, I'm a cool uncle. I don't have any kids myself, but I'm a cool uncle. I have nieces and nephews. And it's fascinating to me to see how children like seven, eight, nine, use Google as a tutor and ask them basic, ask Google and AI and now ChatGPT, ask it basic, basic questions like that. Like they don't know, they don't know, they're, they're new. They're new human beings, they have no idea, right? So yes, uh, I think that, it, uh, Bruce, I think that it will take about up to possibly 50% of the top, very top of the sales funnel. It could, but not all of it. Uh, not John says, uh, back to Bruce Smith, I would say that it will be the same thing eventually. The idea of ChatGPT versus Googling won't really be an argument. As generative AI gets better, we'll see less search results. That's quite possibly the case uh, uh, moving forward. We'll have to see. Doran says, I would optimize a category for swimwear then drill down. This gives you a chance to become contextually relevant. That's an interesting uh, tactic there, Doran. Uh, we do something similar uh, in underground SU University. Uh, I can't tell you exactly what we do, but we've done some scientific testing here to prove what the absolute best contextual relevance is. 
in terms of keywords, in terms of where in the funnel should you be. And uh, some of that is represented in Keyword Spy, by the way. You would go here into AI Spy and you would go into, uh, let me get rid of this. You go into topical clusters and you would generate it, you would generate it here. And these would be our suggestions as the kind of contextual relevance you would want to do uh, in this case. So for example, uh, 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 I believe I could just enter a, a keyword here. Let's do uh, portable air conditioner. Let's choose English and say submit. And in the future, this will be built into auto-generate pages. Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're making auto pages in the future. And then boom, okay. So this is what our testing has proven is the kind of contextual information you would want for portable air conditioner. Here are your pages. Boom, 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 boom. Here it is. That is not content. This content would partially go on a page for portable air conditioner, but this is also stuff that could go in a table of contents and link out to different kinds of pages. And this would be the title tag and the topic for those different kinds of pages. And then you could copy the selected to the clipboard, and then you could start running these, these, uh, these, uh, these keywords manually in Keyword Spy. In the future, we're gonna have a build it out button, and it's gonna work in stages. First off, it'll run the reports, then it'll auto, then, then it'll build out the pages, and then you just add in your WordPress login information, and it'll add that topical cluster pages to your site automatically, which is gonna be super cool. Uh, uh, Hi all, hi uh, Opentunde, uh, Opetunde, is that, did I say your name right? I'm sorry, it looks African. I'm not sure if I said that right. I apologize, Opetunde, if I didn't say your name right. Eric says, great learning for free. Congrats to Josh. No problem, Eric. Uh, again, this is what the show is all about. Come back anytime. Alexis says no and no. She says, yes, I'm gonna use AI content. And she says, my site has been online for a few months. Okay, so thank you, Alexis, for letting me know that. So given that's the case, then I would say, yes, you're going to use AI content. Uh, the design of that changed on the fly. Did an update just get pushed? <laughs> the design of that just changed. I didn't ask where you shipped to. Is there any particular area you ship to? Let me know. And I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to do uh, swimwear in general for you because I think that'll be more useful. I'm going to use swimwear in general because I think that'll be more useful. I think you're gonna get more out of it. And we're gonna see some niches that you might not have even realized will be useful to you. The uh, portable air conditioner is already finished here. So Alexis, uh, uh, let me know really quick if you can, uh, uh, where, do you, where are you gonna ship to? Uh, the entire world or just the US? Waiting for her answer. So guys, if you have any questions, please, by all means, put them in the chat here. Alexis says US only. Okay, that's what I thought. So I will go United States. Uh, you can even drill down to specific locations because uh, you, you can do local SEO in this as well. You could drill down to like specific areas in the United States as, as you saw there. Uh, okay, so then we're gonna say get results. Okay, so swimwear is pending. And then just to make sure we get what we want, I'm gonna do the full figure swimwear as requested and say get results. So we got both pending. Now let's look at portable air conditioner. Okay, so right away, boom, checking difficulty. The difficulty automatically checks the, the, the top 20. Let's do the next 20 as well and get that put in there. Okay, so immediately portable air conditioner starts giving us the keyword ROI and it's, it's automatically sorted by the keyword ROI. The keyword ROI is just the return on investment in terms of looking at the keyword sans competition. So keyword ROI is everything from here to here. It's all this stuff here is the keyword ROI. It takes in the Google Ads competition, the year over year change, how hot it is this year, the Google Ads average CPC as a general metric of how much money is behind the niche. The more money people will bid on it, the more money uh, that you'll make on it, right? Uh, in general, it's a 10%, so you can, this is usually around 10% of what they would make on it, usually. Average monthly search, how many people are searching for it, times, uh, yeah, so that so this times this times this is, is the keyword ROI. The monthly search is traffic multiplied by the average CPC and then multiplied by the year-over-year -year change. And that's how we get the keyword ROI. We get a score. 
a proprietary score only here in Keyword Spy. It doesn't exist anywhere else. Okay. And of course, if you're like, I don't know what these things are, you can click search to see how they look in the actual SERP. It'll do a generalized, no personalization search for you. And you could look to see kind of what, what's there. You can be like, okay, interesting. I see some heavy hitters here. Let's see if those heavy hitters are reflected in the keyword difficulty. And it looks like they're going to be. That's really difficult. 46% difficulty is super, super difficult. That means you can double that number and presume that's where you'd come in the SERP for portable air conditioner. So a lot of people are searching it, uh, portable air conditioner. Actually, they were searching best portable air conditioner. Uh, uh, and it's this is down 30% since last year, which is interesting. The competition on it is high. They don't make a lot of money on it, but a lot of people search it. So this is golden business information for you to make a decision whether or not you want to try competing for this query. And the answer would, might be, of course, Josh, my client, if they, sold, if they sell portable air conditioners, they're going to want to eventually rank for portable air conditioners. And my answer is, yeah, of course they will. But that doesn't mean you want to go for it first. You want to build up to the portable air conditioner query. Yeah, you might make the page first and build a topical cluster so you can accrue off-page signals and on-page signals. That's what you're, And traffic signals, that's what you're going to need to do. Those are the three general areas that I, in public, I can mention. Uh, if you join Underground SE University, you will learn exactly what you need to do there and all those things. Uh, email me with secret sauce in the, in the subject line and I'll give you a, a discount, a huge discount to joining Underground SE University. Or if you just want to do the SEO, you can, again can try Keyword Spy free for two weeks. You can get access to this tool for free for two weeks, no credit card needed. But this is kind of what you would build up to in the end. You wouldn't want to start with this because with a keyword difficulty of 46, you're going to come in at spot 92. You're going to come in at, at page 10 to begin with, unless you've got some other really good things going on. So you might not be like, okay, Josh, well, how do you get this information? This is how we get the information. Uh, as you can see, the, the tour here will tell you what's going on. It says, review the average difficulty for this keyword. The website's taking up the top 10 SERP. Uh, look for the weak link. It'll highlight for you which is the weakest one on the SERP here. Uh, what spots are available and which ones are harder? Uh, for example, 44% uh, difficult, difficulty means you would start at 98. 46 means you would start uh, uh, a spot uh, 92 to 102. You would start on page uh, 9 or 10 is where you would start. You can close it by clicking here. You could sort it by the final ROI by clicking this. And then there are some other options here. You could see... Uh, there's other options here that view hidden keywords do, et cetera, et cetera. The tour is still a little, little buggered up. We need to fix it, but it's good to go through the tour and read it. Okay, so look at what all the data we have here. Look at this. Oh, this is so good, Greg. Look at this. Okay, we we also are modifying it by 20% because you said we're making it 20% harder because you said you'd use AI content. You said you're not a top level expert and you said you don't have a powerful site, which I think is good and honest. This number would have been a bit more misleading. Right now you can double this and presume you're going to end up on page 10 for portable air conditioners. And that's what our testing shows. Now our testing is always ongoing, uh, but the, the testing shows that if the average difficulty for portable air conditioners says 46%, if you just follow Keyword Spy's AI building and index a page on a normal site that doesn't have a demotion and doesn't have a penalty and indexes normally within 24 to 48 hours, on that kind of site, you should expect page 9 to 10 at the very worst using Keyword Spy's system. We provide you actionable, as factual as possible. And that's, that, that statistical analysis is always increasing over time as we watch in the back end in our rank, tra rank tracking system, how people use the system and where they end up when they use Keyword Spy. We're able to more accurately determine where that is. Uh, and so that allows you to know from a business perspective and telling your client or telling your boss or telling yourself, okay, this is where I can expect to be for this keyword. It's a very tough keyword. As you can see, 46% is a super high number. So the easiest one here is Lowe's apparently. They don't have the EMQ for portable air conditioner in the page uh, or uh, EMQ is page. Uh, that means that it's not... Uh, the slug is not the EMQ, I believe. Greg, correct me if I'm wrong, if that's what that means. So the slug is not the EMQ. No, it means the 
uh, EMQ is in page, meaning it's in the content or not. I see. Okay. So it's not, uh, uh, it, the, there is no mention of portable air conditioner on this page as far as we could tell by our analysis, but it is 100% in the title. So uh, that's an SEO deficiency there. Uh, EMQ is in the URL. It's not. Whereas everybody else in the, on the niche has it. So that means this is another deficiency here. Here's another weak spot here. They don't have the EMQ in the URL for portable air conditioner when everybody else does. The page rank of the page. This is good old page rank, PA. So look at the PA of these pages. Not that high at the end of the day. Domain authority means nothing. PA means, or page rank means everything. These are quite low. These are quite low, right? EMQ page focus. This is 50% focused on the topic of portable air conditioners. The site is only 10% focused on this, obviously. So if you had a site dedicated to portable air conditioner, this would be easier to beat. If you dedicated your site to this, this would be easier to beat because a site dedicated to the topic will always pound for pound, everything else being equal, defeat a page focused on the topic because your entire site's focused on it, not just a page. The title focus is otherwise 46%, even though it has it 100% in here. That means they have a lot of other words in here that are confusing Google. The higher this number, the better. It's only 46% uh, uh, focused on portable air conditioner, even though they do mention portable air conditioner 100% in the title somewhere. So that's another liability of their SEO that they've done poorly, that you could get a one up on them on. Yes, they have 663 backlinks to this page. Okay, well, that's good, but it's only giving them a page rank of 27 overall. So, hmm, all right, that's interesting. Um, we don't know what kind of paid traffic they have or there's zero paid traffic. Does zero mean we don't know or zero means we know for sure and they're not, they're not buying ads on this? Uh, based on the data we're getting, they're not, they're not buying ads on this. Okay. That's what that would say. So based on the data we're getting, which is a pretty expensive source, so we hope that it's accurate because <laughs> it's costing us a fair amount of money. Uh, 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 and we upgraded this recently to have uh, even more uh, accurate data than, than we were doing previously. Uh, they're not buying ads on this. That tells you something there too. Remember when we looked at this and the competition is high, but it's down this year and look how little money they make. If they're only willing, the competition is high but they're only willing to bid 72 cents. That means this, that's this, this query doesn't make a lot of money. Pound for pound, this query doesn't make a lot of money. It only has a high uh, uh, keyword value, uh, keyword ROI value, because it has five, uh, half a million searches a month. That's why. Even though it's down 30% from last year. The last six months have trended down 30%. Okay, interesting. But here we have the traffic to the site. Look at all the traffic that they get to this site. This is pound for pound, probably the most important ranking signal there is. And what other keyword difficulty tool tells you this? None that I'm aware of. And factor it in, in this in, a, in an estimation. So Lowe's is the low hanging fruit here. Now, when your low hanging fruit is a total difficulty score of 36, well, that's, that's, that's still a really tough niche that doesn't make a lot of money, but there are some big gaps in their game here that you could possibly compete with. If I were the hypothetical person I'm doing this keyword report, report for, I would make the whole site about portable air conditioners. It's, it's one of the only ways you could, in a timely manner, compete with such powerful competition. So do you see how knowing how SEO works and knowing how keyword difficulty works and seeing the data here that you have at a glance, you could start making reasonable, actionable SEO consulting decisions. This tells me that if I want to beat the low hanging fruit, which is the easiest one, never mind all the rest of these fuckers, this is the easiest one. If I want to beat this guy, I would pretty much need to have a site dedicated to portable air conditioners. And then maybe I'd be able to get onto this SERP within a timely period. Because when I start, the site's going to be on page 10 when I start. Maybe page 8 or 9 because it's a site. It'll be a little bit more powerful. And then Google is going to use what's called QDD. It's going to bump me up and try me. 
I'll be ranking low, 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 then boom, it'll try me. And this trial period is super important for the traffic, the huge amount of traffic you'll get. Do they convert? Do they like it? Well, then you'll do well. Did they not like it? You will do poorly. Why? I'll prove to you in Underground SEO University. You want sales and conversions anyway. I'll just tell you right that. I'll just tell you that public knowledge right off the bat. Okay. How you would do this properly, you got to join. I'm sorry, you got to join Underground SEO University to find out. But at least I'm giving you the preliminary information and how you would do this with Keyword Spy here. Or if you like your own SEO tactics, fine. Use your own SEO tactics. But I would use Keyword Difficulty here to get this information at a glance. Okay. If you have any questions about that, please go ahead and put that in the chat. So then once you have uh, all that, you know, you could just do the next 20 here. You can get a lot of information. Uh, it'll check the difficulty. Shouldn't take that long to get it. Once you've got that information here, you're going to find on this portable air conditioner site, you're going to find a lot of different keywords you didn't think of ranking for before that because due to the various metrics, including the keyword difficulty, you, you multiply the keyword ROI times the easier keyword difficulty is how you get the final ROI. So I will sort it by the final ROI. And these are the most lucrative keywords you can go for because they are the easiest times the most lucrative. Here's a great keyword. It's super easy, 20, portable AC unit. Look at that. You didn't think to rank for portable AC unit. You thought portable air conditioner. You assumed everyone is just typing in portable air conditioner, right? Nope. Look, this is up 20%. Less people search it, but it makes almost the same amount of money and it's up this year. This one's going down. This is the keyword you want to go for. Portable AC unit, which is different than portable air conditioner. I would put those on two different pages. And I would use Keyword Spy to tell me what's the query intent for this one versus the query intent for this one. If you find a difference in query intent, then you know how to structure your article differently. And therefore, you don't have really duplicative content. Because Keyword Spy in Editor, let me show you here, under Editor, I'll just pick a, this keyword here. Uh, for an example, you would go under brief and it's going to tell you the narrative voice, the search intent, the primary search intent, the secondary search intent, the SERP summary and the journey. See if you can find a difference between this, between portable air conditioner and portable AC unit. And then it's perfectly uh, reasonable to have these different ones here under, you could, you could have these different ones. Under portable, you could have a different page for portable air conditioner or an entire site dedicated to this. And one of the pages on the site is portable AC unit. You just fake it till you make it. You pretend like this is a totally different topic and you make a different style of page. Especially if Keyword Spy gives you that special competitive advantage of telling you a different customer journey to this, a different query intent to this. You could also find that under BERT keywords, under reports, a different query intent uh, or you pick a different query intent. Under reports, in, uh, for example, uh, skip this for now, under BERT here, one of the BERT entities you're going to find here is the query intent. The top three are the, BERT, the query intent BERT entities, and they're different, they're different query intents. So one page, and I'll just pretend this is on, uh, I don't want to run a, a report because it would take up to 20 minutes and I, I want to move on, but uh uh, uh, pretend this is portable uh, air conditioner versus portable AC unit. From a human, you might be like, that's the same page. Not necessarily. You should really be doing different pages for those. That, that SEO still works. And you should still be doing that. And one should be maybe finding a company that offers a private label soap option. But this is a different, uh, th uh, how to start a private label soap business and finding a company that offers private label soap options are two different pages. Valid query intents for the single e the same query, but two different pages, right? You're going to be able to find the same thing, I hope, I trust, quite possibly, with the two different kinds of keywords like portable air conditioner and portable AC unit. Also, your best query to try a ranking for, which is up 700% the last six months and people are willing to bid almost three dollars for and has 15,000 searches a month so it's nothing to sneeze at and its difficulty is 37 that's not too too bad 
Some people have very low backlinks here. Very low backlinks. I see some zeros in other places here that you are going to be able to compete with quite possibly. Uh, uh, is Chilwell AC. So this, I don't know if this is a good keyword. You need to check this out. So I could search this here to see, is this a real keyword I can rank for? What is this? Oh, there's the official store. And then there's Amazon. Okay. Well, you might be able to get some, uh, there's a reviews, there's reviews on it. So you can do a review on it. So there you go. Chillwell AC, not Chillwell 2, not Chillwell Portable AC, Chillwell AC. That's the keyword and that's what you should be going for. So I'm seeing all kinds of, of uh, 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 I'm seeing all kinds of, of low hanging fruit here that has really good uh, possible final ROI here that you can go for. So that's why this is so important because you're going to find uh, keywords here you never knew existed. Look at this keyword. You never knew it existed. So I would just highlight it. And I would go here to start keyword report or I can start keyword report on a whole bunch of them at the same time. And out of one seed keyword, we got 2000 potential keywords. And I bet your best portable air conditioner is in here somewhere. Here it is, best portable air conditioner. And you can see the ROI for this is really, really low. It's super competitive. And it's not so great. Best portable AC is a much better one. And best portable AC is up this uh, is up this year. And they bid almost the same amount on it. You know it makes money. So again, you don't know what the super great keywords are until you search. You don't want you don't know what they are until you search. Okay. So uh, while I'm at it, ask any questions in the uh, Discord. So now let me go back and go to swimwear. So now we're going to check uh, plus size swimwear. Here we go. Already I've found, I presume plus size swimwear and full figure swimwear might be the same thing. They might not. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. But here we found a whole bunch of keywords plus size bathing suits as well. Lots of searches, good money, twice the amount of searches this year as compared to last or the last six months compared to the first. Checking the difficulty out. Some of these get super easy. Teenage bikinis. Super easy to rank for this. The low hanging fruit is this one here. Look, nobody is trying to optimize for this. The page rank is pathetic. You could rank for this way, way easier. Way easier. So that's good to know. Apparently no one has the money to buy links on it because they're not paying, well, they're not buying any traffic. So they're not so flush with cash that they can buy traffic and, and buy links for this at the same time. So that's good to know as well. Or they just don't care. So there's some stuff you can rank for here. Super interesting, uh, that's, that's the case. Let's look at final ROI here. Here's an easy one, swimwear for women. Look at how popular it is, up, 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 up times two the traffic for the last six months, $2 uh, per, uh, per query they're willing to bid. The uh, difficulty is super easy. You'd come in on page four for this and look at the low hanging fruit at the bottom of the SERP. Not all of them even have the EMQ in the title. They don't have the EMQ in the URL, so you shouldn't either. Their page rank is relatively low. These number of backlinks don't really matter. It's the page rank that matters. And it's relatively low. Look at this, 19, 20. You can start to match that. Look at all the crap links they have, but such a low, uh, well, it's Target, so it doesn't really matter, and Nordstrom, so forget about that. But look at, like if it's some competitor, looks like a competitor Dillard's here is the one you could try to take off the SERP. But they're not really going for this keyword very well, swimwear for women. So here's another one possibly you, you can go for that could work really well. The page focus is low. They're not really focused on this keyword. They're not laser focused on it. Their SEO is weak. 
their SEO is pretty weak. The, the, the more important thing is the site traffic here that's filtering down to their pages. Are they converting? One of the, net, one of the next steps for keyword difficulty is making an AI that actually looks at the page, looks where the conversion buttons are, and tells you how well they convert, and gives it a conversion score. And I could, I could include that in keyword difficulty. And you could, you could get an idea of how much of this traffic is even useful based on a conversion score for the page, that the AI analyzes the page and says, yeah, this page would convert really well, or says, no, this page would not convert very well. You could also run that on your own pages too. So that's another idea, Greg, that I just got off the top of my head for the, the SEO profile. Yeah, I think that's huge. But you can see with this traffic, uh, especially, uh, I know you're getting a lot of zeros for paid, but I've been clicking through. It's definitely showing up. Um, but the organic traffic is clearly the SERP is, you know, these these pages get a ton, rank for a ton of keywords, yeah, uh, and just get massive traffic. So uh, it's it's tough just looking at that one column alone. Um, but not not uh, impossible, like you said. There's a lot of deficiencies there. Uh, yeah, on the well, left. I'm so glad you mentioned that, Greg, because you're right. Look at all the traffic these pages are getting. They're ranking for tons of different keywords, and that is the opening. They're too spread out. They're 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 too spread out. They're ranking for too many different keywords. They haven't laser focused on this keyword. So if you laser focus on this keyword for your site, or laser focus on this keyword for your page. They, they are not doing very well on it, right? There's not anyone who's really going for this except for this guy who's really going for this. And this guy is really going for this. The rest are not really going for it. And the low-hanging fruit here of 13 will be much easier to beat. This is like coming in at page three or four territory. And then you can start doing the other metrics that you would learn in Underground SE University. Again, email me with secret sauce in the subject matter to get uh, a discount on that to learn exactly how, okay, with Keyword Spy, I can get to page four on this just using Keyword Spy automatically. Then what do I do after that? Join Underground SE University. But here is the very important first step in how to rank is finding the best keywords to rank for to begin with is the important thing to do. So let's see if Swimwear came up with 4,000 ideas. Let's see if full figure came out. Full coverage bikini, full bottom, uh, let's see a full full piece bathing suit. Let's see if full figure did come out. So no, it did not find full figure. So that's why I ran that specific keyword. But I ran the general one too, and that's why you want to run both. If there's like one that the client is really focused on, go ahead and run it alone. But then run the general to say, you know what? It would be much better to try to rank for swimwear for women or, uh, or uh, bathing suits, believe it or not, or bathing suits for women because everyone's too spread too thin. Or, and you would never know that. Here's a huge lucrative query that you can rank for that would be easy because everyone is spread too thin. They're not going for this bathing suits for women. They're going for women's bathing suits. Different keyword, different focus, therefore different SEO rules. This is, you have to focus on the EMQ first. The page rank is quite low. Links are not the biggest factor anymore. Uh, people don't buy them anymore. Uh, but they're still a factor and you can still beat them on it now, right? You don't have to have that many links to the page. Well, that's Amazon, never mind. You, you do have to have maybe a few hundred, right? Average this out and that's probably what you will need, somewhere along those lines. Uh, unless you're doing it really intelligently like we do it in Underground SE University, we get links for free. We can get links for free. Uh, uh, so 13 here, low hanging fruit. Another low hanging fruit, Walmart and Nordstrom are not laser focused on this query. They're a little bit surprisingly weak in this regard. Dillard's here again is low hanging fruit you might be able to take out. So breaking into the top 10 for this will be difficult unless you have everybody online talking about you. You need everybody online talking about you, what we call entity vector in Underground SE University. Uh, otherwise, this probably would be difficult to go for. If you want to go for the ones that are even easier or have the lowest hanging fruit, I would go for ones that uh, based on keyword difficulty, I would start uh, at the top here maybe. Brazilian bikini swimsuits, Victoria's Secret swimsuits. 
I might go for a teenage bikini. I might go for these ones here is what I would go for. Uh, their their year-over-year -year change is huge. Money behind them, still really good searches, okay? And you just keep doing this next top 20 here. I would do uh, average Google CPC. I would turn that up, and I would do the next top 20 according to this. These would have some really highly lucrative ones. Then I would click year-over-year -year change, and I would do the next 20 compared to that. And you would get some ones that are really hot this year as well that would get you some even easier keywords to rank for. So again, I would then sort by money, check the difficulty. I would then sort by year over year change and I would check the difficulty. So if you have any questions, uh, Alexis, please ask them in the chat. Does anybody else have any questions? Please, by all means, fire them in there. Any SEO questions at all? Go ahead and fire them in while I'm waiting for that to run. And I'll finish this off in five minutes. Any questions at all? Uh, guys, if you don't mind, now take the chance to, to like, to, uh, to subscribe, to click the bell. Uh, we really appreciate it. Tell your friends about the show. Uh, we really want to try to increase the amount of people watching the show. Uh, back to the old days when I used to have like 5,000 views, if at all possible. I know SEO has changed. There's less people in it. But uh, uh, this is some really, really good information. And of course, you don't have to use our tools if you don't want to. You could do it manually if you want. Uh, but you know, I would try our tool for free for two weeks. You see the price is very reasonable uh, and uh, for everything that you get in here. Uh, to, to get on spot two, three, or four, sorry, to get onto page two, three, or four automatically without very much effort, just from using our tool, is worth, your, worth the weight in gold, right? So I would recommend uh, checking it out. Try keywordsby.com. You can try free for two weeks and don't even have to put in your credit card. Joe asks, is there any need to worry about cannibalization with those two keywords? Nope. Nope. Just make sure, Joe, that your pages are different. They have different focuses. That's why you need to look in the query intent. Uh, you need to look in the, 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 the journey under, you need to go here under the editor. You need to go to the brief and you need to look at the third narrative voice, the, 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 the primary search intent and the secondary search intent. And if the primary search intent is informational and then you go informational on one page then you go commercial on the next page or look at the journey. It says the user is looking for information on the best, best digital signage software available in 2023. They are likely in the research phase of the decision making process and may be interested in comparing different software options based on reviews and pricing. Their next step could be could involve exploring provided titles and snippets to gather more information about each software option before making a decision. See if there's two different page ideas in here and separate them out for queries that seem the same, like portable air conditioner or portable AC unit. Check the journey and differentiate the pages based on that and or go to reports, go to BERT and check the top three, which are the query intent uh, BERT entities from the BERT AI. One is the best digital signage software for your business needs. The next is find digital signage software options. So tailor this one to the business, tailor this one what your options are, and then compare different digital signage software programs. These could be three different pages for digital signage software, digital signage softwares, uh, software for digital signage. Could be three different pages. And you'd run all three in here anyway and see if they came up with different query intents anyways. So that's how you would do it without avoiding, uh, without triggering any uh, keyword cannibalization, Joe. I hope that makes sense. Alexis says, I need free links. Well, great. Well, you're in the group. So make sure you watch the uh, orientations on linking and you will uh, find uh, that out. Alexis says, I need to get free links. I'm still studying and comprehending. Awesome. Well, that's good. Good job. Good news for you. Uh, congratulations. You're smart that you joined. Uh, watch the basic orientations on how we get free links and how we do entity vectoring, how we're doing reference rank, and how we're doing a tag, external a tags, and other signals there that are important that I can't mention in public, but uh, you can also get for free that are important there. So uh, make sure you watch the basic orientations on that. Do a search in the in the drive, the the drive for the uh, the the repository of files for the um, uh, for the for the course and find the re relevant videos there. 
Okay, so last but not least, guys, let's go back here and just finish this off for Alexis. So we didn't get full figure swimwear, so let's check that out. So for full figure swimwear, now we got the full gamut. We got 50 whole keywords based on one idea. One idea extended into 50 ideas. These could be your topical cluster for this idea. These could, uh, th theoretically, these could be other uh, money pages include, uh, that go along with this idea. For one idea that was pretty specific, we, 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 blew, we ballooned it out to 48 and we found the easiest ones to rank for here at all possible. I could do the next, next top 20. You could be America's next top ranker. So we have uh, ones that get the better final ROI are swimsuits for full figures. There you go. There you go. We have full figure swimwear here, but a much better keyword that apparently uh, uh, is a full figure swimwear is 23. This one is 22. It's slightly easy to rank for is swimsuits for full figures. That would be, if you have to choose between them, that would be the page that you would go for. Now, if you look in Keyword Spy and you ran it and you're looking at the query intent and there's absolutely no difference between swimsuits for full figures and full figure swimwear, if there's no difference between those two, you could still make a page and arbitrarily make this page different than this page. You still can do that. And if Google chooses one of them, then I would focus on that one and go for it. That's the final way to, to avoid keyword cannibalization. If Google goes for one of them, then, uh, and always ducktails, always dovetails to that one, always forwards all traffic to either this page or this page, then you 301 the loser to the winner or vice versa. But otherwise, there's no reason why you can't go for both pages. And you could check to see how easy they are. And they're super easy. 22 is a super easy keyword. You'd come in on page four, probably. No one is optimizing for swimsuits for full figures. And the page rank is pretty low for most of them, except for Target. Got a Forbes article, Oprah Daily, Bear Necessities. So again, we got some big brands here. Uh, Alexis, you really need to look into Entity Vector. You need to look into Reference Rank. You need to look into Author Rank. You need to build out your entities to make sure that they know that when it comes to swimsuits for full figures, you are the expert online to talk about it. Either you personally and or your brand or both, plus all these other signals here is what you need. Because these are some heavy hitters, don't get me wrong. But the keywords here are pretty, pretty, um, the keywords here are pretty, the, the, the stats here don't lie in how they're not laser focusing on this. They're not going for in the title, in the page, or in the URL, so you shouldn't either. Their page rank is low. Their page focus is under 50%, all of them, only half dedicated to swimsuits for full figures. The site focus is very, very low. If you had a site dedicated to swimsuits for full figures and Google knew that you were a trusted resource in this that people talked about, in various ways, not just links, you could rank here. You could rank here. Isn't this a, a clear, uh, everyone's talking, you know, about how Google just uh, focuses on brands. Mm -hmm. Isn't this just like a clear SERP that's just showing, you know, the brands win the day. And you don't see really, it's a little small for me to see, but most of these nine out of 10, it looks like are big name brands, right? All of them are big name brands. Uh, Forbes is a review article. Uh, Torrid is, uh, let's see Torrid. Torrid is, uh, do, do they sh do they sell this or do they drop ship this? I'm not sure if they, they make these swimsuits. I'm not sure if they make these swimsuits or what, if they're an affiliate of some kind. Uh, this is where an AI will help out and I, I, I can build this into the tool as well. Chat GPT, log in. Okay, don't show my password, please. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, uh, who is blah? What do, do they do? They're American retail brand. 
They specialize in plus size fashion for women. Okay. So they're yeah. a major. So there's another. They're a major brand. A brand focused. Yeah, yeah, brand focused. They're not as big name as a Target or a Forbes, which is an article, but uh, yeah. Macy's. Amazon, obviously. So it here's just shows another. Like how much Google is focused in on yes. showing brands first. Yes. So here's another. Here's another. Uh, in the future, something that we would do to pimp out keyword difficulty. In the AI copilot, I'm going to build in a brain that looks at these brands and determines if they're a big brand. If they are, if they are a household brand, I'm going to make this more difficult by 20%. Is what I'm going to do. But still, 42% is still pretty difficult, but you could still compete with these people if you do the legwork of showing, uh, uh, if you do the legwork of showing that you are a brand to be reckoned with, that you are a person who knows about uh, full figure swimsuits, right? Uh, if you talk about that and people talk about you talking about that and they're quoting you talking about that uh, and other tactics that uh, you would find in an underground as a university, um, you, you could you could compete with this, but I have to admit it's going to be harder than twenty two percent. This is more like forty two percent compared to the other ones we're looking at. So that's why I would drill down on more keywords like this. I would see the the easier keyword difficulty, uh, full figure swimwear underwire would be a one I would go for. Full figure underwire bikini tops more specific, more more letters in the query. Uh, I would go for those more is what I would do. Uh, is, is what I would do. Less monthly searches, easier to rank for. Uh, we have Amazon, uh, Lansand, Bare Necessities, Kohl's, Kipshaw, Walmart. Swimsuits just for us. Here's, a, here's an affiliate. So here's an affiliate you can knock off. Here's your, your main competitor you can knock off, right? And maybe uh, Lane Bryant. No, that's a major brand as well. So uh, Bare Necessities, are you guys a, are you an affiliate? Are you, okay, I wanna buy it. Where do I go to buy it? Yeah, add it to my bag. Yeah, sure. I'm this, I'm this, add to the bag. Uh, view my bag. Uh, view my bag. Uh, I save, Clarence, FAQs, who are we? About us, are you an affiliate? They make it really hard to tell if they're an affiliate. Uh, apologies for some of the gratuitous shots. If that offends you, I apologize. Um, uh, I can't tell if they're an affiliate, but they could be an affiliate too. They look like they were a retailer, and if they're an affiliate, they did a good job pretending they're a retailer. Uh, that would be that would be good for you to do, uh, uh, for sure. Um, Okay, let's make them believe you're a retailer. So I would start with the keyword difficulty. I would turn it down and I would go for these ones to start off, Alexis. I would go for these ones to start off with and I would run more uh, uh, keyword difficulty uh, reports. I would go here with the least traffic as well and I would uh, make sure these are all done because these would be the easiest to go for. So make sure to hit me up. I'll send this to you uh, later on. I'll, I'll export all these and send them to you later on. Uh, that would be the easiest keywords. Would be the, the ones with le least traffic uh, might be easier. I would I would sort by year over year change the highest ones. I would do the keyword difficulty for these and check to see how difficult they're going to be. So uh, if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat. Uh, Alexis says gotcha. Uh, 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 great. Okay, guys. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Uh, we've been going almost for two hours now, so that's long enough for sure. So from Greg and myself, thank you for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, uh, make sure you watch next week uh, where we're going to do more SEO tutorials like this, how to actually do SEO, uh, and to help you get uh, the best from your SEO. Uh, Greg, do you have any final comments you want to make before we head out? Uh, no, I'm good. Thanks, Josh. That was really good and helpful. Um, I learned a lot today. And as always, thank you very much. Everybody have a great weekend. See you next week. Awesome. Well, thank you, Greg. So from Greg and myself, uh, that's it for us today. Uh, if you have any SEO questions at all, email me at joshbashinsky at gym.com. That's J-O-S-H, B as in Bob, A-C-H, Y as in YouTube, N as in Nancy, S-K-I at gmail.com. I can help you out. Free five minutes consultations there. If you want to try Keyword Spy for free, 
Go to trykeywordspy.com. Try for free for two weeks. Phil says thanks in the chat, uh, uh, in the Zoom. No problem, Phil. You're welcome. Uh, and uh, if you want to, if you want to know, uh, who's an underground SE University member. If you want to learn about more of the secrets I mentioned, email me secret sauce in the subject line. I'll give the discount for underground SE University. Email me again at joshbashinsky.gmail.com. So I hope you guys are having a great summer. Uh, you guys enjoy your weekend, as Greg said, and we'll see you next time. Now let's see how if I can.